Hey guys, welcome back to Cause3D. As many of you have asked in our comment sections watching the R2 build that we have done recently, you asked about the printer and some of the settings and a few other things and general questions of what we use. So we're gonna go over that in this video and we're gonna talk about this Comgro T500. So let's dive. I wanna talk first about the cons of this machine. The reason I'm starting with the cons is because there's only a few, but they're really, really big. So the first thing we've got to address is, as you can see, we've got a full-size dome sitting here just to give you a context of how big this is. This was already printed prior, but the build plate. The build plate is a magnetic build plate, which is wonderful, except you will see ours is a smooth metal sheet. It does come with the build tack that is supposed to be on top of it. The very first print that we did, we ripped the build tack off with the print. And we don't have a problem using the craft glue, the, the blue washable Elmer's glue that we use on this. We don't have adhesion issues, but we immediately tore off that build tack because it, it just wasn't attached well to the metal sheet. Another thing that we ran into that we we really, really found out is a very bad thing, very bad, is the head assembly. And we have gone through, I believe we've gone through maybe, yes, we've gone through, this is our fourth head that we have on here. And what's happening is there is a small, collar that's up in here somewhere below the heat sink and into the hot end and the heater core. But what's happening is if that head clips at all, it breaks that super thin piece of metal and it spews plastic out everywhere. And the heads are literally unrecoverable after that. You cannot clean them out. They just gum up. It spews plastic up all through the top and it ruins the whole thing. But other than that, those are our two biggest cons. Now let's talk about some of the pros of this machine. One, the build size. It's a huge build plate. If you're gonna build an R2, uh, you can put the dome on it. You can print the entire body in three sections. The rings fits on there great. You can print the legs on there with no problems. It is a very fast machine. I believe it's, we run it at 120 millimeters per second. It's just, one of those that they they did a good job, but they didn't do a great job on building this machine. We've also flashed and updated the firmware on it, which did help, we've noticed. Right out of the box, you're not gonna be up and printing in minutes, like most machines that we've had over the years. What's gonna happen is, you're gonna have to run through calibrations that are in this machine to make certain that your extrusion rate that you're leveled correctly and all that. And I don't wanna dissuade you from this machine, but it is a little bit more labor intensive. If this is the first machine that you're looking to buy, I don't recommend it. You're gonna be able to get through it. You're gonna encounter some problems that hopefully if you've owned other machines, you'll understand and find out and be able to figure out quickly what you're working with and what, how to fix this machine. But let's jump over to some uh, footage that we're gonna run. We're gonna show you just real quick our setups. This isn't the definitive way that we're gonna do every single print that we do. I'm gonna throw an R2 dome on there just so you get the gist of a couple things that you definitely have to change. After you've changed your pro, we've already got a profile set up, so I'll try to hit the highlights of those things and we'll jump on the computer real quick and show you what those things are. All right, so we've got our R2 dome here in our slicer. This is the Orca slicer. And uh, this is the one I believe was recommended to use with the Comgro T500. And the first thing I'm going to do is I've already selected what nozzle we're using. We're currently using a 0.6 nozzle on this. I don't remember what came stock with it when it came. I'm gonna open up the advanced settings at this point pretty much everything. I've got our seam aligned. There's a lot of stuff in here that's just pretty standard when you first open it. Uh, we are printing on a 0.28 and I don't mind doing the sanding. Now your wall loops, this is where you actually set 
how thick you want your walls. And I believe on the dome, I printed that at a four wall loop. Uh, you can choose your, your top and bottom shells and your infill and everything, but I have found that the, let's see, the gyroid is actually what we used on the majority of this R2 build. We are currently printing at 120 to 140. Um, it's fast enough. This will go considerably faster, but we kind of dialed on our particular machine. We found that these settings are typically what are working the best for us. Now, as you know, if you are printing the R2 dome, you don't have to have supports. And I believe the last one I did, I actually did enable supports on that. One of the most important things though, is you need to come up here and go in to edit your profile. And setting overrides is what you wanna come into. This is what we found was the absolute most important thing on getting this machine to operate correctly. You have to make sure that your Z hop is checked. And these three settings here are what we found on our machine is actually working the best right now. If you don't check these, what's gonna happen is the nozzle is actually going to collide at some point with your print. And when that happens, one of two things happen with us. A, it damages the print or knocks the print off the bed. But as I mentioned before, what was happening is that nozzle was contacting and it was breaking this little collar that was up inside the filament, where the filament comes into the head. And when that happens, it started backflowing and ruined all of our heads. So we think we've got this problem pretty well figured out with these settings. So moving back over here to the strength tab, that's where your infill is. I did 15 to 20% on the dome originally with the gyroid infill. And when you're doing the legs and anything structural, I typically would bump that up to 30%, if not even 45% at times, just depending. Well, I hope that that kind of helps some of you guys that have been asking about this particular machine. Again, I'm not here saying it's the best machine ever or the worst machine ever. It's just big. And when you get into big, you get into different problems than you would normally have with other machines. So thanks for joining us today, guys. We'd appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe. And as always, you know, leave comments. That's why we're doing this particular video. I tried to keep this one short today. And if you have any specific questions, you can always reach out in this video and let us know. We'd be happy to answer them. We do our best to answer every single comment that gets dropped on our channel. But we appreciate it because without you guys, we couldn't do this stuff. So we'll see you in the next video.